Hello, fellow Tigers. This is Ed McDonald, Vice President of the Taos University Alumni Association. I know we've all missed a lot of our routine lives the last few months. One thing I've really missed is sports. So I thought to make up for that, I'd give you a quick tour of my collection. I'm quite a collector of Baltimore sports memorabilia, especially Orioles, Ravens. I have a few Towson things, a few Maryland things. It's mostly Orioles and Ravens. Let's take a quick tour. Okay, let's take a quick tour around the entire room. My collection is mostly kept here in this one bedroom in my house, and then I keep some things in the garage as well. But I keep everything confined mostly to this one room, so the rest of the house looks fairly normal. But this room's kind of crazy with all the sports stuff stuffed into it. Mostly Orioles and Ravens I've collected over the years. I have some Towson Tigers items. I've got some University of Maryland items, but it's mostly Orioles and Ravens. Okay, first up on the tour, baseballs. I probably have more than 100 in my collection. They're either signed by players or balls that were caught by me at games attended over the years. I have signatures of every Oriole who's in the Hall of Fame and many other major leaguers. And I have two balls that were signed by two members of Congress, Jim Bunning and Wilmer Vinegar Ben Mizell, who both played Major League Baseball. Of course, every fan loves to collect bobbleheads, and I'm no exception. I have had just about every Orioles bobblehead that's ever been given away. I've got quite a number of Ravens bobbleheads. Also include glassware, Coke bottles, anything that was given away at games I've collected over the years, tankards, cans, all kinds of items. Another part of the collection involves photographs taken over the years. Here's me with Bob Lee and Chris Byrne of ESPN, autographed Adam Jones. I got the bat against Bob Feller twice when I worked in radio, and there's certificates to prove that. A bunch of collections over the years, pictures with Cal, Eddie Murray, all kinds of different items that were either some were purchased and some were just photographs taken over the years. But it's been quite a thrill to collect some of these items. I pretty much run out of wall space. I think I have to stop now at this point. I have to get rid of Manny Machado. He's no longer an Oriole. I may have to pass him along to somebody else along the way. Another part of the collection involves ticket stubs and lanyards. I hang on to them forever. I've been fortunate enough to go to both the Ravens Super Bowls. I've got the tickets hanging there. I've been to the first game ever in Baltimore, the final home game at Memorial Stadium for the Ravens. Been to quite a number of Orioles games over the years. Been fortunate in both cases to be able to go on the field, uh, either for the Orioles or the Ravens. So I've hung on to all those lanyards and ticket stubs over the years. Here's the most prized part of my collection. It's pictures with me and Cal Ripken. Uh, in 2003, I was working for Governor Ehrlich in Annapolis, and Cal came down to meet with the governor to talk about some issues. And after the meeting in the governor's office, the governor led him on a tour of my office. There's the governor giving him the tour of my memorabilia in the office we call the Shrine. Here's me and Cal then sitting in my Memorial Stadium seats in my office. You can't see it here, it's kind of faded, but it says, he signed it, said, just hanging out in the Shrine. I enjoy talking baseball. When are you having me back? Cal Ripken. So that was a thrill to have him in that day. I was also fortunate enough to go to the game when Cal Ripken tied and then broke Lou Gehrig's record for the most consecutive games played, 21-31. So that was a highlight as well. So this is probably my most valuable possession. Picture of me and Cal Ripken sitting in my office in Annapolis when I was working for Governor Ehrlich. Now we moved out to the garage. Behind me are four bar signs, all Ravens themed. All four were purchased at Towson University fundraisers. I'm on a scholarship committee that raises money in honor of Elizabeth Wainio, a Towson University alumni who was tragically killed on 9-11. The money we raise each year provides scholarships to worthy Towson students. So I was thrilled and honored to purchase these four bar signs at Elizabeth Wainio fundraisers, and they proudly are displayed here in my garage. Now on this wall, what you're looking at are posters that hung at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Each year, the Orioles have a different theme. They hang on light poles all around the stadium, and then at the end of the season, they're taken down, and during the off-season, they're sold to fans. So I purchased these over the years. The posters themselves weren't that expensive. They were a lot more expensive to get them framed. But they used to hang in my office when I worked, but now they're hanging on my wall in the garage. Now what you're looking at are among my most prized possessions. These are original seats from three different venues. The red seats there are from Cole Fieldhouse, the original home of the University of Maryland Terrapins. Next is Oriole Park at Camden Yards. These are the green seats that sat in the lower bowl. A few years ago, the Orioles replaced all the lower bowl seating with seats that have pads on them. So these are the original seats were taken out and then sold. And then here are the original seats from Memorial Stadium, the original home of the Baltimore Orioles. As you can see, they're painted gray, but you can see flecks of yellow underneath. Yellow was the original color. These seats were in the mezzanine level between the upper and lower decks. 
But when Baltimore got a Canadian Football League franchise, they came in and painted all the seats gray and blue to clean up the place a little bit. And so these are the original seats that uh, sat in for many Orioles games over the years. While most of my collection is Baltimore based, I have a little piece of North Carolina out of my garage as well. I worked for a North Carolina congressman for almost 30 years and he represented Pinehurst, North Carolina. And twice we hosted the US Open in 1999 and 2005. The North Carolina DOT put these highway signs up all throughout North Carolina, leading to Pinehurst number two. And I was able to obtain both. Hey, thanks a lot for taking a tour of my sports collection. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope if you're like me, you're ready for the games to begin again. So thanks again and go Tigers.